Hi everyone, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Well, in today's video, I'm going to share with you some footage that I've been taking over the last few days of selling flowers here at my flower stand with some beautiful dinner plate dahlias, gorgeous lilies and gladiolas. Then the day after that, we'll be selling some gold light sunflower bouquets. And then I hope you'll stick around for the end of the video because I'm going to share making bouquets for the Growing Kindness Project. And I did a video on the Growing Kindness Project before, but in a nutshell, it's just about giving away free flowers to people in your community. So I was trying to think who I wanted to make a donation to this time of year and who I decided is a local cancer clinic. And these bouquets we're gonna be delivering this morning are going to the oncology nurses there. So as we go along and harvest flowers, I'll do my best to point out any tips, tricks about these flowers along the way. And I hope you'll enjoy this video of a day here in my cut flower garden. Let's go. So I wanted to start our time together by showing you these absolutely glorious Cafe Ole Dahlias. Are you guys getting the beige or buff Cafe Ole Dahlias at the moment? Or are yours a little more on the blush side? I'm really getting only the blush. And here's a look at my breakout dahlias. Don't they look absolutely phenomenal? This year, the dahlias are really making me want to jump even more into learning about dahlias. So I'm contemplating joining the American Dahlia Society. Are there any members here on this channel? I'd love to hear your thoughts on joining. Now I want to add a bit of fragrance into these arrangements. So the Corvara Lily is just what this flower doctor ordered. And of course, it wouldn't be Northlawn Flower Farms without some gladiolas. And these are the beautiful Zamora gladiolas. I'm using a lot of different elements for filler, but what I'm showing you now are the Rose Bonbon Cosmos, some Celosia, and a small amount of Jewels of Opar. So here's a look at Saturday morning's arrangements. We've got hydrangea, cafe au lait dahlias, corvara lilies, breakout dahlias, some firelight hydrangeas in there that take up a nice amount of space and arrangements. And also if you see the green element there, that's sedum, autumn joy sedum before it turns pink, which is my favorite time to pick it. There's also some Colorado yarrow in these arrangements, and I heard recently it's best to pick Colorado yarrow in the evening and to add OBB tablets into your buckets. So if you're struggling with getting your Colorado yarrow to hydrate properly, if it's wilting or flopping, and I've seen mine do that in the past, make sure you wait until it's mature, harvest it in the evening, use an OVB tablet if you feel it necessary, and I can see a significant difference just in doing an evening harvest rather than a morning harvest. So let's get these guys out to the flower stand and hope for a great day of sales. Well, it was a great day of Saturday sales. We sold four, one was left over, so that one is on my kitchen counter at the moment. But now we're on to Sunday sales and I'm gonna be harvesting the Gold Light DMR sunflowers. I think these sunflowers are absolutely beautiful with their bright gold petals and their green center. I planted them six inches apart, but these guys have ginormous heads. So I think here on in, I'm gonna go four inches apart. And if you can see what I'm doing is removing the leaves right there in the bed before I go ahead and harvest the stems. Just makes things a little bit easier. Now you see I'm harvesting these quite open, but I've been realizing something recently. If I put closed sunflowers or just opening sunflowers at the stand, they just don't sell. So I gotta do what sells, and that's why you're seeing them pretty open here in the bucket. And I really do love all of the Pro Cut sunflowers. These are pollenless sunflowers, so they're great for cutting. Like I say, I'm loving the gold light, but to be honest, the plum is still my favorite. 
Now let's move on to harvesting zinnias and we use the wiggle test to know whether or not a zinnia is ready for harvest. So if you put your hand down a few inches under the bloom head and give the stem a good wiggle, the head should not move and jiggle all around. If you put your hand a few inches down, wiggle the stem and it moves willy nilly there on the stem, it's not ready for harvest yet. So you can see I've paired the sunflowers with Annabelle hydrangea, sedum, the zinnias, agaratum, and a little bit of obedient plant is that foliage spike. I'm using it before it's bloomed. So let's get these out for the Sunday flower stand. So now let's move on to our donation flowers. We're going to be making eight bouquets, which I want to look fairly similar. These are going to the oncology nurses at a local cancer clinic. To set up this delivery, I just went ahead and called the clinic and talked to the head of nurses and set up a time where I could bring some flowers for his staff. So you can see I have to use organza bags for my dahlias. I just remove the bag from a dahlia that's ready to be harvested and place it on to a tight bud. This really helps me with pest pressure like tarnished plant bug, Japanese beetles, spotted cucumber beetle, earwigs, basically anything you can think of that's going to affect the quality of your dinner plate dahlia blooms. So I'll go ahead and pick some Cosmos now, and I love these Cosmos for kind of a supporting flower, but I'm also using them as foliage. And now we're back to the sunflower patch this evening. Once again, these are a little more open than I would ever sell to a florist or someone who really knows their flowers, but these are going to bring cheer and joy to someone's day and I want them to be open. So it's an immediate cheerfulness, not a cheerfulness they witness in two days time. And we'll go ahead and pick some nine bark for foliage as well. And we'll harvest some foxy foxglove, which are putting on their second flush. This second flush is always shorter than the first, but still usable, especially for mason jar arrangements. Well, now that our buckets are nice and full, let's take them inside and make some bouquets for these nurses. So what I really love about the Growing Kindness Project is that it just brings people together for the greater good. I mean, everyone I think wants to give away flowers, but sometimes maybe you just don't know how to start or you need a little bit more encouragement. It's completely free to join the Growing Kindness Project as a gardener. You can join at any time and you get these free printables, great resources on growing cut flowers, and it's just a wonderful community to be a part of. Well, now it's the next morning and we'll go ahead and deliver these flowers over to the clinic. And I just wanna hope that these bring a smile to the nurses' faces and let them know how much their hard work is truly appreciated, not only by the patients, but by family members of patients as well. Well, I hope it was enjoyable to watch what I've been getting around to the last few days. And if you are giving away flowers with the Growing Kindness Project or any charitable organization, or maybe you're just giving away flowers all on your own, I just want to send you a big thank you. And I would really love to hear all about it. It would be wonderful to just fill the comment area with stories of flowers that we're all giving away together. I would like to do another much bigger donation in the fall when I have kind of my red and bicolor sunflowers come in. I'm not really sure who I want to donate those flowers to at this point. So if you have any suggestions, please let me know. But until next time, I want to wish you a great day out there in your gardens and happy gardening. Bye!